Welcome everyone. This is the friends and family edition uh, for NFTs and Web3 101. Uh, I've got on here WAGME with Michelle because WAGME stands for are we all going to make it? And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to learn and explore together. Uh, absolutely, you can do this. Thank you for making the time and thank you for being here. Uh, absolutely not financial advice. I am one data point. This presentation is one data point among many. So please make sure that you keep leaning in and learning. And to that point, I'm gonna make it a bit easy for you. I have uh, a room full of really curious people. So all of your questions can help with everybody else's research. Don't be afraid to ask questions at the end. Uh, feel free to also put your questions in the chat and I'll go back through those at the end. Uh, you're not too late. You are so on time. Just to give you some perspective, last year, $41 billion was spent on NFTs. And of that, it was only 280,000 people who were owning those NFTs. This year, we're at 360,000 people owning NFTs. That is tiny, so tiny but not as tiny as the fact that less than 10% of them are women. So you are among those roughly 30,000 people who are coming into the space and owning NFTs. And we wanna keep growing that number and widening the circle for everyone. This is an all-inclusive group, all are welcome, but we do wanna make sure that women feel represented and welcome here in Web3. Uh, there might be a reason why you have felt a little left out and why, if you're wondering um, how you haven't uh, had the knowledge that you would like to have up until now, it's because Web3 does have a little bit of a problem. If you go into Google and you type in what is an NFT, this is what you see back. Nothing wrong with all these fine gentlemen on the screen here, but it's exactly that. It's, it's a page full of men speaking about the same kinds of topics and covering the same kinds of themes in NFTs. And we, we know that everyone thinks differently. Uh, men, women, non-binary, we're, we're all learning in our own unique ways. And so we need to have more voices and more representation sharing those stories and sharing education in the space. All right, so some screen grabs for you. Here are some podcasts. As part of that research that you're gonna keep doing, um, please take the time. They're, it's not that long, eight minutes to 20 minutes, really digestible segments. I highly recommend these podcasts. I've listened to them all, plus many others, but these are a great place to start. In particular, uh, NFTs for newbies so many good examples for how NFTs are being used so that you can start to connect the dots on how they might be relevant for you if you're considering launching your own NFT also. Accounts to follow. Let's start updating your feed so that you've got relevant and trustworthy news coming into your news feeds on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, on the left, we've got news feeds. Um, the first one, actually everything highlighted in that purple color, uh, that's us, that's me. Um, so doing my part to share as much knowledge as I can openly and freely. Wagme.nft is on Instagram only. Um, and that was a place to just highlight an all-inclusive female-led NFT projects. So really giving them the spotlight they deserve. Uh, they're all vetted and nothing is paid for placement. Uh, it's purely just a, you know, a space for you to come in and learn about new projects as they're happening. I love Waverly. They are a news source. Vayner NFT and Hello Sunshine do a great job trying to create the balance of an all-inclusive news cycle about NFTs and crypto news. Uh, for women in Web3, so many fantastic women. Um, these are not all super celebrities. There definitely are some. Uh, Randy and Britt and Shira Lazar are very well known. Um, they've all been across the, you know, the media for many years. But what we're finding in Web3 is there's such a wonderfully connected community of the everyday woman that I've listed here who have become these almost angels, if you will, in the Twitter DMs, really helping people navigate the space, collaborate and connect. Uh, so a few to call out, you know, Debbie Soon and Rigi are women that we have connected with personally. They are fantastic. If you come across them in Twitter, say hi. Um, myself and Andrea, my co-founder, you can always reach out to us. We try to be very active on Twitter daily. And if we can't help you, we will find somebody else who can. 
Uh, and then just some female NFTs to follow. Great projects, these are vetted, most of them are verified, uh, that gives you an idea of what are women doing in the space with the art, with business building, with utility, uh, what's their business model? So you can start to do your own research and take a look at what they have created here. And of course, Discord. I know Discord is so new for so many people, but don't be scared. I promise uh, that it is actually a very rewarding place to be. So there is our Discord. Start there. We are your friends in Web3. We will hold your hand. Uh, and we've done a few things differently in our Discord to really make it a fail safe space for you to come in and thrive. So first of all, there's no links. So you cannot be at risk of any phishing scams in our Mavion Discord uh, because we've completely disabled that capability. Uh, you are going to be welcomed. This is Hallie. Hallie is our community manager and she is currently based in Norway. Uh, she is coming back over to the US in a few weeks, um, but she does an incredible job. She is constantly recognized as one of the best community managers in Discord for Web3. Um, she will answer all of your questions. She has an incredible team of mods. Mods are community volunteer moderators who really have a love for a project and just want to volunteer their time to make sure that other community members uh, get the most out of their time in Discord. And of course, Discord is great because it's where you can get all the insider content, the insights, there's even perks. We'll announce things on Discord um, that are really exciting for our community and our NFT holders. So don't be scared of Discord. Okay, today we are going to cover two main pillars so that you walk away from here feeling like you've got actionable knowledge uh, that is useful to you. First of all, what is an NFT? And if they're so good, why haven't we used them sooner? And secondly, what kinds of NFTs are there and how will we actually use them? What are the benefits? What are the rewards? Why do we care? Okay, so NFT, what is it? It's a non-fungible token. Cool, that's super understandable. We can all under, yep, no, I, I hear you. Fungible, a word that nobody said until 12 months ago. So just a reminder that NFTs Web3, it's not hard. It's just not intuitive, like non-fungible token. So let's break this down. What is fungible? Okay, fungible. Here's a picture of my daughter holding two 50 cent coins from Australia. Uh, this is fungible because she can decide which one she wants to keep and which one she wants to give to her brother. She can mix them up, she can swap them around, it doesn't matter. They are totally transferable. No matter who is holding which one, it has the same value to each owner. That is fungible. Something that is non-fungible are these eggs. Um, these, are, this is a real egg you can crack and cook with, and this is a brass paperweight egg. So yes, they're both eggs, but they have very different value based on who is holding it. A chef in the kitchen only has value from that real egg that if they can cook with, uh, the paperweight would be worthless. But to someone in an office, on a windy day, outside working by the beach, maybe you need an actual paperweight and a real egg would hold no value. So in that example, non-fungible is about having value to the true owner. And each can be valuable in different ways, but to different people. So those are tangible examples. That's a non-fungible tangible. An NFT is a non-fungible token. Great, what on earth does that mean? Okay. Tokens can be anything that can be digitized. So a picture, we see a lot of JPEGs, digital art as NFTs that can absolutely be digitized. Audio files like music and video files for film, gaming assets like the skins that maybe some of our kids are buying in Fortnite and Roblox. Those are digital assets that can be NFTs. In fact, all skins are basically NFTs. Uh, an AR filter, uh, uh, secret codes. Now, this is where NFTs get really fun. 
imagine you've got an NFT with a QR code and that QR code unlocks access for you to go and stay in a boutique hotel whenever you want. Uh, or it could be a confirmation code to a plane ticket so that you can go and see your favorite team play in the FIFA World Cup. Um, an NFT can also unlock access, access to events and parties access to merch drops. We're going to see a lot of that in the future as brands like Nike and Prada release limited edition products, but you'll only have access to buy them if you own certain NFTs. So NFTs can be all kinds of things, but ultimately they unlock benefits for the owner in different ways. So if they're really exciting and they're they offer this much value. Why haven't we talked about them before? Why were we not talking about NFTs in 2010? Well, that's because they can only exist in blockchain. Blockchain is often synonymous with Web3. So NFTs could not be used in Web2, Web2 only in blockchain technology. So what is blockchain technology exactly? It's definitely all over our news feeds. Many of us say it, but do we actually know what it is? Let's go through a little bit of a history lesson so that you've got the full picture. Let's go back to 1990. This is the era known as Web One. It was read only. That was very much a time when the web was used for your company intranet or your school intranet. You couldn't interact other than just to gain information. So here's an example of a company that's posting reports about earthquakes. You could read and access those reports, but you can't do anything with it. You can't download them. You can't comment on them. You can't edit them. You can't share them. You can just read them. So that is read one in web one. Oh, sorry, read only in web one. But by the late 1990s, something really cool happened, and that was called blogging. So blogging took read only into a read write. And here is where company servers were built so that people could post information and then viewers could comment. And now we have this unique behavior where we can interact using Web2. A lot of things have happened in Web2 since the, 19, the late 1990s of blogging. Uh, we've seen an explosion of all kinds of interactions that were allowed because the company servers let us do those things. So the company server created things like online shopping. That meant that they could list products for sale and it allowed us to transact and buy them. Um, it allowed things like online dating, uh, social media, post a photo, comment on a photo, share a photo. It allowed us to do online banking, connect our company accounts with other accounts and our social security numbers to receive and pay taxes, um, online travel transformed, uh, even looking for a home online. I mean, ultimately, I think we can agree that Web2 was really created for the Kardashians. And so we could constantly spend every week hitting refresh to get the skims drop only to have it sell out in mere seconds. So those are all the things happening in Web2. They were all created and owned by company servers that posted information and it allowed us as users to do something with that information, buy it, share it, interact with it, and so on. But in Web3, it's a little bit different because there are no company servers. There's no company who owns a blockchain. Instead, think of blockchain like an infinite Lego tower. And every time there is an action done on the blockchain, a Lego brick gets placed on top of one another and it's all placed in the order with which it was received. That's why we refer to it as the digital ledger. It's a long, long ledger of actions that are just simply being recorded in time stamped order. It's pretty cool because it's not run by servers. Instead, it's run by nodes. Nodes are computers run by people who are working together constantly to do one thing, to validate, and verify information so that only the true information and the true actions that are validated can be entered into blockchain. So in a sense, blockchain is this truth serum is how I like to describe it. It's decentralized. There's no servers. It's all those nodes working together. 
And because of that, it's transparent. All those nodes have to work together to see what's going on, see the actions. They can't hide anything. They really have to work seamlessly, anonymously, and transparently together. And because all those actions are being verified and put onto the blockchain, it is this new word, immutable. I'm pretty sure immutable was also not spoken about until uh, 2021, but it basically means you can't change anything. Everything on the blockchain, all those Lego bricks put on top of one another as they, as they go on, can't be copied, they can't be deleted, and they can't be edited in any way. And that is why it is truly this truth serum and NFTs are like the truth tellers. So NFTs couldn't exist in web two because a company could own the server and create different pages that could be copied or changed or deleted. But in blockchain, it can't. So with an NFT, there's only ever one true owner and the blockchain helps everyone see very clearly and without a doubt who that owner is. So if we're talking about having an NFT that gives you access to a party, that that party can see by using blockchain if I have the real NFT or if I have just a screen grab. And I'm gonna tell you the screen grab is not gonna get me into the party, but the real NFT will. Same thing for all those merch drops that Nike will do and for all other benefits, blockchain tells us who the real owner is. All right, and then just to really make you feel like a superstar next time you're having dinner with friends or colleagues, uh, you can tell them that this idea for Web3 has actually been around since 1991. Blockchain technology was created by two people, Stuart Haber and W. Scott Stornetta, and they had a very simple mission to create a system that would timestamp information so that it could not be altered in any way. Very simple mission, and it is totally revolutionizing the way that we are living 30 years later. Okay, so let's talk about what these NFTs can actually do. We know where they come from, how they work, the benefits. Well, first up, they can prove ownership. Um, things like uh, your property, uh, products, particularly when it comes to luxury premium goods. NFTs can be attached to authenticate what is a real Louis Vuitton bag versus what might be a fake one. Um, your health, you know, owning records and proving um, what kind of vaccinations you've had, what kind of operations, medications you have access to. That proof of ownership is really powerful outside of just art and music, which is where a lot of us are seeing the news today. So as that continues to grow, there's a lot of change happening on the back end um, for many companies using NFTs, proving and validating ownership. Uh, how about where you went? It's called a PO app, a PO app NFT. It stands for Proof of Attendance Protocol. Uh, so imagine you can use this now to show uh, which cool events you've been to. Did you really go to Coachella? Uh, which conferences you've gone to? But also what about education? What school you went to? What classes you've taken? Travel in terms of your permits and visas, uh, the work experience, internships, Power NFTs are not usually saleable, uh, meaning you can't trade them. They are these POAP NFTs in your wallet that are proving who went where and when. Think of it like the social media in Web2 or the LinkedIn for future students. As you leave college and your future employer is looking across all your social handles, they will absolutely be looking into your crypto wallet to see your PO apps. What events have you been to? What are your credentials? Because you can't fake that. And that is going to be a big truth teller for a lot of people that can really help um, or maybe not depending where you've been. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind as you think about for all those future students, what will your crypto wallet say about you with those PO apps in there? Uh, of course, our kids, they're already using NFTs uh, for all those skins and digital assets um, for League of Legends, Roblox, you name it. Uh, big, big business and a very native, comfortable space that they are already operating in. Uh, most kids today are 
very normal. They feel they find it very normal to uh, buy digital goods that don't have a physical. Um, that's not new for them. And so as they continue to mature and age into becoming bigger spenders as an adult population, digital goods will absolutely be highly prized and valued. But they also prove your social identity and uh, status. So think about this just like we do in our real world. You know, everything we do and say and wear um, says something about who we are. As we meet friends for lunch and the shoes we wear, the car we drive, the bag we put on the table, it is all an indicator of our identities. And NFTs are another extension of that. It will say something about you for friendships, dating, your careers, of course, and your social status. A couple of examples here just to call out. So these NFTs are called a PFP. A PFP stands for picture for proof. And you may have seen a lot of people changing out their Twitter or Instagram profile pictures for these artworks. So these are a collection of artworks by different projects. And when somebody changes their profile picture to be one of these, it's telling others about who they are. So these are actual examples. Let's, let's run through them. So World of Women, uh, Reese, this is Reese Witherspoon's actual World of Women NFT. What that tells people about her is that A, she's supporting women, um, but World of Women have a give back that proceeds from their NFTs go to support emerging female, prominently female, uh, artists around the world. So Reese, being an artist herself uh, and a member of the talent community, uh, she's really share sharing that she is a supporter of supporting emerging you know, future uh, artists around the world. Uh, Serena Williams, this is her CryptoPunk. That tells people that she is an early innovator. CryptoPunks have been around since 2017. They were the first PFP NFT. Um, and of course, they're the ultimate blue chip today worth millions. Uh, she's telling people that she runs in a certain network. CryptoPunks give you access to exclusive events and parties. Um, I don't think it comes as a surprise that she would be running then in those circles with uh, top tier celebrities. But it's really sharing that she is someone who is not afraid to push boundaries, be a part of the tech world. And that is very much a badge of honor to have that kind of PFP. Uh, Mavion, which is one of ours. This is Rebecca Minkoff's NFT. Um, and as a designer, you know, we love having her in the community because with this as her PFP, uh, it's sharing that she believes in sustainable fashion and supporting and uplifting independent designers, creating that like-minded sense of community by being a part of a mission that she herself really cares about. And we thank you, for Rebecca, for being part of our Mavion world. Uh, and of course, Boss Beauties. Uh, Alison Felix has this great artwork here as her PFP. Uh, Boss Beauties is known for supporting women, female entrepreneurs, find their passion and move forward. Um, and of course, that is, I think, a big story for Alison of dreaming big and working hard to achieve, achieve those dreams. And, and that Boss Beauties feels like a great alignment to her core values. So the bottom line is you are going to judge others and others are judging you based on what's in your crypto wallet with your NFTs. It's not as dire as it sounds. It's not as extreme as it sounds. We're already doing it, as I said before. It's just something that humans love to do as we constantly assess other people and are reading and learning about the interests of each other. Um, and it, it, I think for anyone who was at Miami Art Basel in December last year, you know this to be true. You know, it does create um, those who are already in Web3 versus those who are not. It didn't matter if you spent $10 million on a piece of art in Miami. If you didn't have a certain NFT, you were not getting into that after party. Um, so this idea of NFTs bringing together like-minded communities is at the forefront of what's happening in the space. All right, let's go through um, three different kinds of NFTs in a little more detail. Art, utility, and membership. Um, there's lots more, but these are kind of the three main pillars that the majority of NFTs today are falling within. 
Okay, so art, art NFTs. This is a great example called the Long Necky Ladies. Uh, this is by a 13 year old artist. Her name is Nyla Hayes. She launched 3,300 of these Long Necky Ladies in March of last year. Uh, what's extraordinary about this is in Web3, the barriers to entry are so much lower, which means we can make space for the top talent of the world, not just those who have access to the biggest resources. Nyla, 13 years of age, didn't need a gallery. She didn't need an agent. She certainly didn't need an SEO or marketing strategy. Uh, she just launched these NFTs on OpenSea, which is a secondary trading marketplace called OpenSea.io. And within a year, had sold $4 million worth of her long necky ladies. She is now 14 and these continue to trend. Her art is exactly that. It is digital art that people are starting to put in their digital metaverse galleries. Uh, They're proud to share them in their crypto wallets with other people and they continue to trade them back and forth. And in doing so, as they trade them, the value goes up and Nyla receives a royalty every time those are traded. So she's done, uh, the, the total trades on her NFTs are about 14 million now, of which she is taking a small percentage every time, and that will be in perpetuity. So as a young artist, she is really now funding a great future for her to continue to develop her art and release more collections. Time Magazine also announced last year that she was their artist in residence. And we are really excited as friends and female supporters to see where she keeps going. So this is an art NFT, purely the vision of the, the picture itself and the aesthetic of her artistic vision in the NFT. A utility NFT would be something like ours at Mavion. So PFP, that's the picture for proof with a utility. So you see here, there's some examples where they're all different. We're releasing 5,000 unique NFTs. They all have the same body structure or skeleton, but they all have a unique combination of backgrounds, hair, makeup, skin color, clothing, and of course, an accessory. With our NFT, there is a utility. That means there's something more than just the artwork itself. And while this artwork is extraordinary and we love it, thank you to Young Kim, who is our talented illustrator. Uh, you also, as a holder, receive the physical earring, ring, necklace, accessory featured in your NFT. So great, you've now got this physical piece that is worn in your artwork that you can wear in your real life as well. And more than that, you'll also get AR filters. So you could use the AR filter like on this Zoom or in your social media. Uh, then as we keep going through our roadmap, utility NFTs like ours will release and activate other benefits and ways that you, the holder, can extract value. So for example, the wallpapers you see behind them, the makeup, the lipstick, uh, the clothing that they're wearing, they will all be activated as layers for different collaborations in the metaverse and in the real world. So imagine now that that lipstick, the pink lipstick, the rainbow lipstick, it's now being sold in department stores around the country. And perhaps this clothing, this dress is a digital dress that can be purchased and used as a skin in the game. All of those collaborations are driving revenue and that revenue will share royalties with our NFT holders. And we're really excited for these concepts of utility to take shape where your NFT is now basically your mini retail empire. And again, for generations driving revenue right back into your wallet. The other side of utility is on the creator side. So while our holders are continuing to receive royalties and benefits, also on our creators, because all those accessories that are featured are made by independent designers. The 16 designers from nine countries that we are working with, whose pieces are all represented in the artwork. And you can see here a bit of a close up. There's a bracelet being worn by the Mavion in the yellow shirt, and there's some earrings uh, by the Mavion in the red shirt, for example. Uh, those designers, they will also receive royalties from the ongoing trades and sales of these NFTs. 
So I mentioned before that Nyla Hayes has done about 14 million in secondary trades as people just keep buying and trading and selling the NFTs in the secondary market. Those are royalties that will go back to those designers. And this is game changing revenue for these communities because normally if they make a bracelet, they make 50. And once those 50 bracelets are sold, that's it. It's back to the studio they go and they have to keep making more. But now with NFTs, they don't. There's a set number of bracelets made that are featured in these NFTs. And despite even sending out all those bracelets, they will keep getting revenue from those trades. Let's talk about one thing that's uh, unique to PFPs and that is rarity. So in collections where it's a PFP, meaning it's that same base, but a very different combination and every single one is slightly different, no two are the same. Uh, some of them have more rare features than others. So in this example here, we can see that Mavion number 2243 um, is wearing a pink tux, really cool geo background and this gorgeous earring. When you go into OpenSea, you can actually see what is the rarity and what features are the super rare versus more common. So here we can see, ah, that clothing, the crystal bow tie pink tux is less than 1%. So that's a super rare piece. If you are somebody who mints and opens an NFT and owns this, you're pretty excited that you've got a super rare clothing. Uh, you can see that the eye color is 18% chestnut. So that's pretty common. Uh, you can see that the accessory, the, the accessory Cherie is 2%. So that's common, but not a super rare. Oh, sorry, un, it's uncommon, but not a super rare. So these are just data points and they, they can really matter differently to different people depending on what you're most interested in. Some people are excited because they just want that earring and others are looking for, I just want the most rare artwork. It's all a matter of personal preference. All right, and finally, membership NFTs. So what you were seeing here is the Fly Fish Club. And if you'll notice down the bottom, there's an example of three NFTs all their NFTs are the same. So with long neckies and with Mavion, our NFTs are all different, but these are the same. That's because this is more like a digital membership card. And by owning a Fly Fish Club NFT, you're essentially owning access to be able to make a reservation to this restaurant. So it's a sushi restaurant in New York, it exists, and you can only go there if you own an NFT. Um, they released 3,000 of these NFTs uh, about six months ago. When they first released them, they were a few hundred dollars. Now the cheapest to buy is right around $10,000. I know, it's crazy, right? How does that work? How is that possible? Here's what happens. Somebody bought that NFT six months ago. They went to that restaurant. That restaurant over-delivered and had, gave them an incredible experience. The food was great. The ambiance was amazing. Um, the person had a great time. They left. The hype and the excitement was shared by people um, about their experience. And so demand grew. And now more people want to be able to go and check out this restaurant. Well, supply and demand. There's only 3,000 of these NFTs if somebody really, really wants to go, they start putting in bids to buy that NFT for more than you paid. So maybe I bought that NFT for a few hundred, but now I can sell it for a thousand. Great. The second person now pays a thousand dollars. They go a few times. They bring their friends. They have great bragging rights. They're loving it. Uh, and then a few months later, they're good. They've gone enough times and demand has continued to grow. And now they sell their NFT to the next person for $3,000. So they're making money with that sale. And so is the restaurant because the restaurant is also making a percentage of the royalty every time those are traded. So that has kept going and going. And for the past six months, it has climbed all the way up now to 10,000 US dollars. All right, so some practical information to get you on your way. Uh, get ready to screen grab um, so that you can come back and reference some of these notes here about how to set up your wallet. All right, this is just a little note of encouragement uh, and explanation about what we're doing, but you can definitely do this. Good news is you only have to do this one time. Again, it can feel complicated. It's not intuitive, but it's not hard. Um, allow yourself some time, set it up, and then never have to worry about doing it again. You'll be ready to go. 
All right, so step one, I've highlighted here in purple, step one and two, this is your homework for today if you haven't already done this. Step one, you're gonna to go to your laptop. You're going to open an account at an exchange. I recommend coinbase.com if you're in the US. Uh, for those who are not, there's other local exchanges that are probably better for the country that you're in. But in the US, coinbase.com. And very simple, you're still in web two, you're just gonna create a password and a login. Not complicated, you've done this before, that's not new. When you're in there, you will have to verify your ID. So it'll ask you to scan your driver's license and then you can link your bank account. Uh, again, you're, it's very safe, you link your account and then you can buy cryptocurrency. So Ethereum is the main currency to use on uh, exchanges like OpenSea. So you're gonna purchase Ethereum. Um, here's why you want to do that uh, sooner rather than later. It's because it can take three to 18 days in the US for funds to settle. In other countries, when you buy crypto, you can use it right away. But with exchanges like Coinbase, you will buy cryptocurrency, you will see it in your exchange right away, but you won't be able to do anything with it for a period of time. So if you do those things just today, setting up an account, linking your bank account, and deciding how much cryptocurrency you want to buy, um, that will get you ready and we can, you can get those, those waiting days uh, done with. Once you've done that, um, you would need to go to uh, open a crypto wallet on your phone. So exchanges I recommend doing on your laptop uh, because it's just new. You wanna see a full screen and make sure that you're entering in, in the information correctly. But for your crypto wallet, that's all done on your phone. And it's an app that you download load from the app store. So uh, I recommend Coinbase Wallet. Uh, there are others, MetaMask, Trust, Rainbow, uh, plenty of other options. Uh, for the exercise we'll go through here, Coinbase Wallet is what I will refer to. Uh, so please note that your Coinbase Wallet is different to your Coinbase.com account. Uh, it's not the same login. In fact, with wallets, there's no login. I like to say crypto doesn't care. So with a Coinbase wallet, what you're essentially doing is you're creating a Lego brick. That Lego brick is now gonna live on the blockchain. And the only way to ever find your Lego brick, it's not with email, it's not a login, it is with a 12 word seed phrase. And that 12 word seed phrase is given to you when you open it in the app. You'll be shown that 12 word seed phrase one time. So you need to write it down and store it somewhere very safe. Do not keep it on your phone. Do not email it to yourself. Do not share it with others. Anyone who has access to your 12 word seed phrase will have full access to your wallet. Um, so think about how you'd like to manage your security and keep that 12 word seed phrase safe. Um, it takes about a hundred seconds to set up a wallet. So when you download Coinbase wallet app, it shows you those 12 words you then hit confirm and yes, and you're pretty much are good to go. You enter those 12 words as a check. It will ask you to just verify that you've recorded those words. It will ask you to enter them one time and then that is it, you have your wallet. Um, you will then wanna find and copy your public wallet address. And the way to do that in Coinbase is you go to Coinbase receive. There's a big button in the middle that says receive. If you click receive and then click Ethereum, you will be shown a QR code and this long gobbledygook uh, series of letters. And it will start with an O and an X. So O, X, blah, 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 blah. This public wallet address is very safe to share with others. In fact, you need to share it with others if you want people to send you things. Um, so let's say your company at some point says, hey, we can pay you in crypto. This would be the wallet address you give them. It's uh, your public address. Nobody can take anything out of it. They can only put things in. Very much like your account number and routing number for your existing bank account. Um, so once you've got your public wallet address, um, you can then go to your coinbase.com account back on your laptop. And then you send the cryptocurrency that you just purchased into your wallet. Uh, you cannot use your exchange, your, your coinbase.com to buy NFTs. 
you can only use your Coinbase wallet to buy NFTs. So that's why we're taking this step right now to send the Ethereum from Coinbase.com into your wallet. Um, and it happens instantly, um, just depending on your Wi-Fi speed. I notice sometimes it can take anywhere from one to four minutes, um, which sometimes can be the longest one to four minutes. I know I kind of like deep breath, hydrate, um, have faith in the blockchain and it will appear. And so from your exchange into your wallet, you will now have that balance sitting safely in your crypto wallet. Once you have crypto in your wallet, you can now buy NFTs. And we will go through more on a step-by-step -step on how to actually purchase an NFT. Uh, I've got a screen grab here that you can absolutely take note of right now. This is for the secondaries on OpenSea.io. And there's some notes there on how you would connect your wallet. And then once connected, you'll be able to make purchases. Minting versus secondary we will go into in a lot more detail. Uh, a few top line security notes for your wallet. Um, you will never receive an email. Or you should never receive an email from your wallet. You'll notice when you set your wallet up, it never asks for your name or your ID or an email or a password. Um, so any emails you receive from Coinbase or from OpenSea or MetaMask or Trust or any wallets are basically scams. Uh, delete them right away. If there's ever information that you need from those platforms, you will get notified when you go into it. So if your Coinbase wallet ever needs to tell you something, when you go into your Coinbase wallet, the message will be there. Same thing for your exchange at coinbase.com and for OpenSea, it's not gonna be sent to you through email. Just remember crypto doesn't care. Crypto does not care. There's no customer service there. Um, so avoid scams by not opening any emails about crypto and you will protect yourself from 99% of all the scams that are going on. Okay, uh, final, oh, final screen grab and then we're gonna open some questions. Uh, please reach out anytime. Our team is fantastic. We love helping onboarding and talking about NFTs to everyone. Uh, there's my email, uh, my social accounts, of course, our company account. Um, we are here and ready to help everyone thrive in this space. Uh, so with that in mind, let's jump into questions uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so I'm gonna go through the chat and just see here and catch everyone up. Um, okay. Okay, um, so Emily is asking, now going to move my NFT and rare into my ledger. What does that mean? Great question. So a ledger is a cold wallet. So the Coinbase wallet I just have been talking about is referred to as a hot wallet. Hot wallets are stored on a device like your phone. Um, they are safe, but there is the risk that if you lose your phone um, and seed phrase that somebody could have access to that. So a cold wallet is a physical device. It looks like a thumb drive and Ledger is the leading standard in cold wallets where you can actually transfer your assets onto this external hard drive and keep that safe. So there's no risk then if somebody um, hacks your email or you click a phishing scam, it's not connected to anything um, through a device, it's separate. Uh, question from Emily too about selling an NFT at an amount you are comfortable. When you wanna sell an NFT for the first time, if you select auction and the highest bidder, does the system automatically initiate the transaction? Um, so you set the terms for auctions. I will say majority of sales on OpenSea firstly are buy now. Um, it, you definitely can get lucky and have people accept your bid. Um, I would say if you're selling, you're usually gonna be selling it under its value through auction. Um, so just keep that in mind. Auctions are usually for people who are trying to get out of something really quickly and you know it's not on the floor. It's rare that I've seen pieces go at auction over what they're really valued for. Um, 
but you would set the terms if a, a minimum price and a time frame that you would be willing to take if you want to go down the path of having an option. Oh, thank you, um, Jai Crypto .eth for answering that for the ledger. Okay. Oh, question about community. If you do not hold, if you don't, if you do not hodl an NFT from a collection, what is the benefit of joining the NFT projects community? Uh, great question. It's where you can learn about. Uh, NFTs. There's so much knowledge. You know, this is a really collaborative community, and that's why you want to find a community that you trust. I think our Discord is fantastic. I'm, of course, not biased, um, but there's lots of great Discords to join, and that's where I think you can, you know, listen. If you, you know, don't want to dive into conversation, read the room, literally, read through the feeds and the news and what people are sharing, um, and use that as a place to learn. Um, you can ask people for their insights and advice. And in, what you'll find is people are very happy to share. So use those NFT project communities as a place to build your knowledge, build your network and learn. Uh, to how to prevent FOMO. Oh, I mean, you, you have to really like anything, set your own goals. You know, whether you're collecting for the art, wanting to drive a certain investment, um, you know, I don't recommend, I, I think jumping on hype trains is very dangerous. Um, just as fast as a project can take off, it's also the speed with which it can crash. So, you know, really keep doing the research. The way to prevent FOMO is to join communities. It's to follow founding teams and see how long they are going to be here for. Are they gonna last the distance? Are they making key hires? Is their roadmap strong enough to stand the test of time? Um, then FOMO doesn't matter, you know, don't worry about the moon birds and the crypto punks that you've missed out on. If you didn't jump in on those, there's more of those to come. Um, it's better to have missed out on a few of those than to have jumped on every hype train and risk being scammed or losing all your ETH because you made a hundred, um, you know, investments without taking your time to do the research. Uh, and last question was, is it easy to move NFTs back and forth from the ledger to online again? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a process. It's not difficult. It, it can be a little time consuming, um, but it's, you know, people do it every day, daily as they're buying and trading. So absolutely. Uh, Jamie is asking, how do you find the roadmaps? Um, quality NFT projects will post them on their official website and Twitter or in their Discord. And so you can make sure that you... Uh, are up to date on roadmaps that they are posting. And if you have questions, reach out to those founding teams, always. If they don't get back to you, that tells you something. Um, take a look and see if they're getting back to anybody else as well. And you know, read, read through as many answers as you can and just get a sense of the level of engagement that a team has with its community. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Ginger. Thank you for your questions. Hey, Michelle, it looks like Jessica has her hand raised. Oh, great. Thank you, Val. Jessica, yeah. the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Yolantis. Um, I, I'm so happy that you uh, are doing a grassroots education. Um, this, is, this was a great slideshow and I apologize for showing up late. And um, you did uh, go over the Mavion utility and um, I think I was floored by something and now I can't remember the detail that it was. Uh, so it had to do with um, us holders getting uh, some sort of a revenue and I, how does mm -hmm. that work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you look at the, here, I'll just, if you think about our artwork and all the layers that we have there from the hair, the clothing, the makeup, we'll, we'll pull one of these ones up here so you can see this a little bigger. Um, this is where we are excited to activate those layers more than just a beautiful picture in your wallet. So look at this, uh, let's say lip gloss. Uh, now imagine we are launching a Mavion lip gloss. It's launching in Nordstrom's or Target's or the metaverse. 
and people can either buy the physical product or it's a uh, digital asset for various gaming skins. Um, all of that revenue coming from those kinds of collaborations um, come back to our stakeholders, which are the independent designers, our holders, you, uh, and the company so we can keep hiring more people and growing. Um, and so we are excited for the idea that you know, if this was the, the 90s, 80s, we'd be talking about Dunkin' Donuts franchises. But in 2022, we can talk about how your JPEG can go to work for you. And yes. while it might be that, that lipstick can go and drive royalties, and then, you know, that wallpaper, you know, let's have that wallpaper as a real feature wall in your home. And we collaborate with an interior designer, and you can actually buy the physical wallpaper to twin with your NFT. So how would we know, um, like, is it written into the smart contract of, of your contract? And then would it be um, like an anonymous uh, deposit into our wallet with no notification as to what it was? Because that's what I'm finding these airdrops are and, and these payments are is, I don't know what I was paid for unless I take good notes. So um, for all of the royalty disbursements, there'll be a schedule for which collaborations we have. So let's say we have collaboration A, B, and C. Um, we would then promote what are the disbursement dates that any holder who has this will be dispersed their share on July 1st. And for like collaboration B, any holder who has their NFT in their wallet on August 2nd will get it then. Um, that way you know what date we're looking at to see who's the owner on that, those dates and the disbursement is going out on dates that you're aware of too. And that way you can decide, are you keeping it or are you selling your NFT also? Because I would hate for somebody to have held it for three months and then the day before we're doing a collaboration, you sell it and you've missed out on all those royalties. So oh. the, 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 the public calendar is important to look at so that you can see when Mavion will take those um, recordings of all the wallet holders and then all that all those um, royalties go back into the wallet holders, the, the wallets of the holders. Okay. I've been super curious as to what your road shows have looked like and I don't live in California. So um, do, do you have any kind of a video of a previous road show? Uh, no videos. We have lots of images, though. Um, in fact, we were just talking about it this morning as a team. Our Instagram, um, if you scroll through, there's some images there of the events we held in New, in New York and LA. Uh, oh, we've also that. got, and then we have another one for those who are in New York, June 20 to 24th. We have a week-long Mavion Clubhouse that we'll be hosting um, all-day events, workshops, panels, um, and fun perks for our Mavion holders. But the, the in real life is the fun stuff. I agree. Um, we've got some, uh, Val, I think um, there are some lives that are still recorded on Instagram. Is that right? There are some lives, yes. And there are, um, there's a reel from our LA Roadshow that has all of the pictures and videos compiled. Um, and yeah, we're working on getting that for New York as well. And yeah, catching everyone up on the roadshow. Thank you. Um, absolutely. I'll go mute, thanks. Oh, you're good. Jessica, thank you for that. Um, we've got, I'm gonna put into the chat. So what we're trying to do for May is make May your month to learn everything that you need. Um, so by hosting these weekly sessions, um, we wanna kind of add on to each one so that you can bring in some friends, family who need to keep learning and will keep building throughout the month of May and then come June, you guys will be experts. Um, if Rick is still, uh, Rick, do you mind posting the registration link and details into chat so that people can sign up and just get that on their calendars for the next one? All right, I just dropped in the chat. Thank you. Yes, the FOMO thing, I, I hear you. But don't worry, there's like, we're just getting started. We talk about being early. There's still so many great projects to come as well. And I also think 
don't underestimate some of the projects you may already be holding. They haven't even begun to realize their full potential. I'm telling you, whether it's a world of women, a boss beauty, a Mavion, there is just so much work. You know, I'm connected, our team is connected to the founding teams there, you know, from BFF to the hug. There's a ton that is being built on the back end. You know, don't don't worry. There's these are not short-term holds. These are some some big things coming um, from really smart men and women. Um, who are not going to stop until they can build and innovate and deliver real value for the holders. All right, I think that almost wraps it up. Are there any more questions before we wrap for this evening? Thank you all for your comments. Thank you, Jinjo. We're excited too. All right, everyone will have an incredible evening and thank you for choosing or uh, sharing your time with us and for being patient while we got started. Yes, all those time zones, exactly, Val. Um, I'm gonna sync up my calendar so that doesn't happen again. All right, everyone have a great evening, great day ahead.